In 490 BCE, 600 Persian triremes landed on a beach 35 kilometers north of Athens. Standing in their way were 11,000 hoplites led by the prestigious Athenian general Miltiades. The Persian forces outnumber the Greeks approximately five to one. And yet, the smaller force managed to push back their would-be conquerors. The Battle of Marathon was a major turning point in the Greco-Persian Wars, and the Athenians' victory would be celebrated for many years. The modern-day distance running event is named a marathon in memory of a soldier from the battle who ran back to Athens to announce their victory. Though whether this is real or legend is uncertain. The Persians wanted to invade Greece in part due to its rich silver mines. In 545 BCE, they came closer to this goal after their victory over Croesus, the king of Lydia. The victory forced some Greek populations in Asia Minor to surrender and gave the Persians a solid foothold to carry out a large-scale invasion. In 494 BCE, the city of Miletus revolted against its Persian rulers. They were aided by Athens and the nearby city of Eritrea, and even burned down an important Persian temple. The Persian king Darius was enraged by their sacrilege, and in 491 BCE, sent messengers to the Greek cities demanding their submission. Athens and Sparta killed the Persian messengers, goading Darius to invade. The Persians began their attacks, first capturing the city of Naxos, and enslaving its inhabitants, then taking the city of Eritrea. Filled with confidence from their string of victories, the Persians set their sights on Athens. The Greeks were surprised by the ferocity of the Persian attacks. Seeking aid against the upcoming invasion, Athens was forced to appeal to other cities for help. In a surprising move, they asked for aid from Sparta, known for having the strongest army in Greece. The Spartans agreed to the request, but they were unable to send reinforcements in time due to the religious feast of Apollo Carneos, which forbade them from leaving their city until the next full moon. The only extra help Athens managed to acquire was from the small Boeotian city of Plataea, which sent an additional 1,000 hoplites. This was the first time in Greek history that their entire civilization was under attack from an external invader. Despite sharing the same language and same religion, Greek city-states had often warred amongst themselves. The Persian invasion was the first time they realized the necessity of collective action to ensure their survival. The Persian fleet originally planned to land at the port of Phaleron. However, the exiled Athenian tyrant Hippias, who sided with the Persians, advised them to land at Marathon instead, where it would be easier to deploy cavalry. The Athenians were unaware of the Persian battle plans and left Marathon undefended. This allowed the Persians to quietly set up camp on the beach while Athens scrambled to mount a defense. The Persians' overwhelming numerical superiority forced the Athenians to get creative with their defensive strategy. The city sent 10,000 hoplites, along with the extra 1,000 Plataean reinforcements, to a hill located above the Persian encampment. Once in position, Athenians had to decide whether to wait for the Persians to attack or to strike them first. Athens strategists believed the former option was better, but the general Miltiades believed a first strike was more advantageous, as the Persians had their backs to the sea. In the end, Miltiades' opinion prevailed, and the Greeks made their move. The Persian archers got ready. The most feared and revered Persian archers were determined to shoot down the small Greek force before they could ever reach for the Persian lines. Miltiades ordered the two tribes forming the center of the Greek formation, the Leon Tis tribe, led by Themistocles, and the Antiochis tribe, led by Aristiades, to be arranged in the depth of four ranks, while the rest of the tribes at their flanks were in ranks of eight. The Greek phalanx was thus thin at the center and thick at the sides. The Greeks then started running at the Persians when they came under the range of the Persian archers. Quite a spectacular 
yet. Terrifying sight must have been for the Persians to witness 10,000 hoplites run towards them with their shields up in an attempt to save Greek freedom. The unprecedented charge of the Greek hoplites at Marathon had inflicted considerable damage at the Persians. Not expecting a charge, the Persians took heavy damage from the Athenian shock tank. The Persian center tried to hold the line, while the flanks fell off from the immense pressure from the heavier Greek flanks. The Greeks thus successfully double enveloped the Persians. With their backs to the sea, in front to the sharp Greek spear, the Persian morale dwindled. Witnessing the collapsing flanks, even the prevailing center lost the will to keep fighting. Many tried to flee on the ships, The victory at Marathon was considered miraculous. The Greeks attributed this miracle to the appearance of legendary heroes who they allegedly saw return from the dead to fight at their side in defense of the city. For example, several Athenians swore they saw the mythical King Theseus take up arms at Marathon, a scene which would later be depicted in Athens' Agora. Similarly, some hoplites attested that Heracles appeared at Marathon clad in his lion skin and wielding a club. The Persians suffered heavy losses during the battle, with approximately 6,400 casualties. The Athenians, on the other hand, only lost 192 soldiers. Runners were dispatched from Marathon to Athens to deliver the news of victory. After the Persians fled Marathon, they turned their ships towards the Bay of Phaleron. The Athenians saw this and realized that the Persians wanted to take the city of Athens while the Athenian army was at Marathon. An Athenian messenger was dispatched from the battlefield to Athens to deliver the news of Greek victory. After running about 25 miles to the Acropolis, he burst into the chambers and gallantly hailed his countrymen with Niki, Niki, Nenikikium, which translates to victory, victory, rejoice, we conquer, and then he promptly collapsed from exhaustion and died. To the ancient Greeks, nothing could be nobler than dying after performing a heroic deed for one country. The runner dispatched at Marathon should not be confused with Fade Epides, who was an Emeridromos or a military runner. It was Fade Epides who was sent to Sparta asking for aid before the battle. The Athenian army force marched from Marathon to Athens and prevented the Persians from taking the city. Fearing further losses, the admiral of the Persian navy called off the attack, and the Persians returned to their empire. To commemorate the sacrifice of the runner and immortalize the Athenian victory at Marathon, Marathon Race was introduced at the ancient Olympics, which still continues to be a popular race of modern era. Darius was furious at the campaign's failure and decided to seek vengeance in a retaliatory expedition from both land and sea. Meanwhile, Sparta begrudgingly congratulated Athens on their victory. The victory at Marathon marked the beginning of a new era for Athens. According to Herodotus, Athens' success at pushing back the Persians ranked them first in the ongoing competition between the Greek city-states. The Athenians immortalized their prestige by erecting monuments in both their own city and in Delphi.
The Battle of Marathon was also perceived as a blow against tyranny. Tyranny went from being perceived as a simple flaw in authoritarian excess to major treason against the homeland, a sin that rulers would take great pains to avoid being accused of. This helped consolidate the institution of democracy for the next two centuries. I hope you enjoyed this look into the famous Battle of Marathon. It was not only a major turning point in the history of Athens, but also for all of Greece. Its repercussions would be felt for many years to come. Farewell, traveler. I hope to see you again soon.